Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and it is all about the update that has brought us the new Builder Hall game mode. The boat has finally landed ashore, and it has found an entirely new village that's separate from your original village, and is a little bit different in terms of the defenses, the buildings, the troops, Everything is just a little bit different, very cool stuff. This video, I'm going to be covering all of it, defensive, offensive, just a complete overview of the entire new game mode for you guys to check out. Be sure to be subscribed if you're not already because I'll be making more videos on this new Builder Hall game mode in addition to the usual uh, Clan War content I put out. So what is the Builder Hall? How does it work? Don't worry, I'm gonna make it as simple as possible in this video, but to give it to you guys in a nutshell, it is a second village you have separate from your original village that operates pretty much the same way. You have resources. The difference is what you're doing is you're trophy pushing. The trophies are how it works and you do 1v1 battles. So to get trophies, you go against players in real time, just like you would in Clash Royale. So they attack your base as you attack theirs, Whoever does better wins the trophies. So that being said, let's take a look first at each building you get as you go from Builder Hall 1 all the way through Builder Hall 5, which is the max Builder Hall level, and talk about what buildings are the same as they are in your regular village and what new buildings you get uh, in this new type of Builder Hall village. Okay, so here is Builder Hall 1. You can see it has all the early stuff you have in your main village. Uh, a few things to note. First, the army camp. You do not upgrade them. You just add more as you progress through the game, which is different than the main village. The uh, army system in general, in terms of the troop capacity, works a little bit differently. And I'll talk more about that when I get to the attacking uh, side of the game here. But let's focus on the buildings for now. Everything else, though, pretty much the same. You have the barracks, the... Uh, laboratory, the uh, gold mine, elixir pump. The names might be a little bit differently, but it's all the same stuff for the most part. Another thing to note here for the walls, they move in groups of five and they rotate in groups of five as well. So you can't have single wall segments anymore. You have to have them in blocks of five. You have to upgrade them together, move them together when you're building your base and rotate them together. So it uh, makes base building very interesting. And finally, also just so you guys are aware, things might be just a tad different in terms of uh, certain buildings and stuff like that on the version you're playing on because this is the developer build so not everything is going to be exactly the same most likely if there's a few tweaks just before the update comes out just want to get that out there uh, just so you know let's move on to builder hall 2. at builder hall 2 you start to see some of the new things they've added to the game very cool stuff of course you get a few extra buildings like an army camp but check it out the archer tower same as a regular archer tower it targets air and ground does the uh, point damage all the same stuff in the main village but you can toggle it between long range reduced speed in terms of how fast she shoots the arrows then limited range but much quicker speed so it depends on how much damage you want versus the range you want we have the double cannon which is basically a cannon on steroids does uh, more damage than the typical cannon, so that's cool there. A push trap, which basically pushes your troops, or the, uh, uh, the attacker's troops, in different locations. So it's like a spring trap, but it pushes the troops. It doesn't actually fly them off the map. So you can rotate it, and you can use it strategically to push ground troops to places you want them to be on your base. Builder Hall 3, you can see we have some new wall levels, but there's also some much more exciting new things that are added to Builder Hall 3. Um, we have the spring traps, of course, just the same as the regular game, but we have the gem mine, which will act like a elixir collector or a gold mine, but it will get you gems. Now, it doesn't go that quickly, so don't get your hopes up too much. You only get a handful of gems each day, but it's enough to, uh, to kind of help supplement your gem income uh, in addition to removing different, you know, uh, uh, the obstructions in your village and purchasing them with your money, uh, you get a little bit of gems from there, which is cool. Um, other stuff that's new, we have the firecracker. That's the air defense looking thing. It's like an air defense, but it's much less powerful. It's kind of like an archer tower almost that only targets air troops. Not a very powerful air defense, so um, it's not going to be a huge help, but it does have some pretty good range to take out um, air troops. We have the Tesla, of course, same as in the main village. A little bomb you can kind of see next to the 
uh, laboratory right there. It's a it's called a mine, but it's basically the same as a bomb in the regular village. What else do we have? We have the crusher, which is a really cool defense. You can see very limited range, doesn't you know reach out that far, but any ground troops that get near it will get crushed. It does an extraordinary amount of damage. I don't want to give the statistics away because the numbers may be changed, but you'll see it when you pull it up in your village once you get to Builder Hall 3. It is a force to be reckoned with at Builder Hall 3, 4, and 5, and it will do some extreme damage to any ground troops to get near it. Let's just say that. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, a few new things or a few additional of some of the same stuff I talked about, such as the push trap, and I believe you get a third army camp as well. At Builder Hall 4 now, you can see things starting to get a little bit more complex. Let's take a look at some of the new stuff you unlock here. First, the thing that looks kind of like a barracks, that blue thing, it's called the guard post. It is like your clan castle. Now, troops cannot be no donated to it. It comes with troops, a handful of barbarians and archers. Once you upgrade it, it carries a few more troops and those will defend your village in uh, any type of battle until they die or until the attack ends so it's kind of like a cc but you cannot donate donate to it it just comes with the troops then we have the giant bomb or the i think giant mine is what it's called in this it acts like a giant bomb then this is probably one of the most exciting defenses uh, in the Builder Hall game mode, the big air bomb thing. It's called air bombs, but I prefer to call it air bomb spawner because that better describes what it does. It spawns air bombs endlessly. Whenever an air troop is within its range, it will just start shooting air bombs out at it, deploying one every few seconds or so, and they do an extraordinary amount of damage. Not only do they do splash damage, but they do more damage than like the firecracker, which is the air defense equivalent almost, and any archer tower, of course. So this is gonna be the, your main defense against air troops. I might make a video to help you guys um, know exactly how to use it, but just know it's the thing you wanna protect most because it's crucial for defending against air. It's by far your best defense um, uh, towards the sky. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about that you get at this town hall level is called the clock tower. And as you can see, you only have one builder, which is, you know, kind of unfortunate. It's, it, you know, you can't upgrade multiple things at once only having one builder. But what this does is it helps you boost everything in your village. You hit the um, boost button and you get to have your entire village boosted in terms of the resources, the laboratory, the barracks, the, uh, the upgrade. So if you're currently upgrading something with your builder, he will go faster. I believe it's four or eight times as fast. I can't remember what it said, um, but it will do it multiple times faster than usual. Now, every eight hours, I believe that might be subject to change, but right now every eight hours you can reboost. So that's a cool feature and it allows you to get, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes, however long it ends up being uh, of boost in at a certain part of the day when you're going to be online attacking a lot. You want to collect the resources, you want to get the upgrades and the laboratory research going quicker. Uh, this is a cool way to get things going on your village despite only having one builder. So a very cool addition there that you unlock at Builder Hall 4. Finally, here is the top Builder Hall level currently, Builder Hall 5. You can see the base has gotten pretty complex. The walls are high level. You've gotten multiple new defenses, just the uh, multiple cannons, multiple double cannons, uh, multiple archer towers, firecrackers, a lot of cool stuff. And it's not too big, but it's big enough that there's a lots of room for strategy and a lot of variation in how you build the base and how you attack it, but it's also small enough that it doesn't get overwhelming like some of the upper town hall levels in your main village. But let's talk about the new stuff now. You have the multi-mortar, which is a, a mortar that shoots out four mortar shells. So you know how the mortar in the 
uh, main village kind of is underwhelming. It's pretty much put on the outside of the base to screw up balloon pathing on a lot of bases. This one is not to be laughed at. It does a ton of splash damage. You'll see it in action in just a moment. Um, very strong defense. You want to keep at the middle of your base here. Then also your hero. Um, you weren't going to get away uh, without having a hero in the new uh, game mode. This is the battle machine. It is a little machine that your builder sits in and he basically just goes off on bases. It's a ground targeting. Um, well, I guess everything's ground targeting. Um, it's a ground hero, I should say. And he has an ability that regenerates. So you hit his ability, he gets a health boost. Pretty much like the king, you can compare him to, compare him to the barbarian king, but his ability is regenerating. So if he's still alive, like every, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, I don't know how long it is, he will power up. Um, and pretty much go into the uh, Royal Fist or whatever it's called for the Barbarian King. It's a similar type ability and it's unlocked once you get him to level five. So the first five levels are available at Builder Hall five. Hopefully they'll add more levels um, in future Builder Hall levels if they add more Builder Hall levels, which I hope they will. Um, so very cool stuff. This is the max currently right here. Not too big to make it just like your main village. Uh, but big enough that the strategy is going to still be very uh, complex and exciting to, to mess around with. So that all being said, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the offensive attacking part of the game. So the offensive side of things are actually very simple within the Builder Hall game mode. I'm a Builder Hall 3, so we'll start with what you have at Builder Hall 3 right now, uh, going into the uh, troop training queue you can see here you fill an army camp with a single type of troop you can't diversify it you fill each army camp with only one type of troop builder hall 3 has the first four troops unlocked the uh, next three are unlocked as you upgrade uh, up to town hall four and five and the final three on the right there are coming soon so there's, there's a total of seven troops currently uh, these seven right here that are within the game currently um, the first four, though, I'll go ahead and show now. To start, we have the Raged Barbarian on the left there. I don't want to show statistics because they are subject to change, so you guys will be able to see them within your own game. Uh, the Sneaky Archer, the Boxer Giant, and the Beta Minion, they're all very, very similar to the troops in your main village with some slight differences. They have some power-ups, and as you upgrade them in your laboratory here, uh, you'll notice that they don't necessarily just have this, the standard increase in hit points, increase in damage, that kind of stuff. They get a very unique type of uh, change made to them as they are upgraded. So um, for one level, for example, you might get a few extra in your army camp. For another level, they might have the ability to be invisible for a few seconds, such as the Sneaky Archer. Um, for the Beta Minion, uh, at one upgrade level, they have increased range for their first few shots. So the upgrades are very um, different types of things, not the standard upgrades you have in your main village. You guys will see about that as you progress through the game and see how your troops are upgraded because there's different little perks you get as you upgrade each level. It's not just an increase in DPS and hit points as it might be. So like I said, you fill each army camp with a type of troop. I have three army camps. Let's check out the uh, these last two troops here, and or these last three troops. We'll put uh, each of them in an army camp. Uh, it takes one minute per army camp to train, so three minutes total, regardless of what troop you train. So very quick stuff, only three minutes, and you can attack. Of course, we can gem it, and I will. So I'm gonna cut away, gem it, and go to battle. Okay, so I just finished gemming my army and I hit the attack button basically and hit find now. And you can see I got matched up with this scrub named Bisectatron. The battles are gonna be in real time. So basically you're attacking someone as they attack your base. Whoever does better gets the victory here. So um, I'm gonna kind of scout out this base, see how I wanna attack it. But let's take note of a very important feature. Do you see by each troop icon, there's the little arrow button. If you tap on that, before the battle starts, you can switch what troops you wanna use. I can switch to my Raged Barbarians, I can switch to Sneaky Archers here, and I can have multiple army camps of the same thing. So basically, it doesn't matter what you train. Um, 
you can always switch it. All it matters is that you have all your army camps full, and then once they're all full, you can switch to whatever you want once you see the base, so you don't have to use what you have. You can always adapt and, uh, and improvise changing what you have. So I'm going to do one of each of these uh, army camps. You can see the numbers vary. You have two boxer giants, six um, sneaky archers, and ten barbarians. That's how the numbers work, at least here at uh, Builder Hall 3 so far. But um, attacking this base, interesting base. I think I want to try to get to the crusher and the double cannon first because they're the are the uh, the biggest threats to ground. So I'm going to start with a sneaky archer here. You can see plenty of time here. Uh, have the, the three minutes to attack, so not going to run out of time, especially on such a small base. Just have to be very strategic in how I drop my troops here. Um, let's see, a mine just went off. The uh, archer tower just taking out my archer up there. Gonna go in with the giants now and get these raged barbarians down. You can see because they are high enough level, they have the ability where they do, um, they basically have the rage effect for the uh, first part of their short lifespan. Uh, as you can see, it is a very short lifespan because they are dying here. I did get the town hall taken out by some of my sneaky archers and a few of those barbs but not gonna get the two star it looks like, unfortunately. We'll have to see what the other guy got, that um, that guy named Bisectatron who we were going against. Let's see, oh, we got it done. Um, he only got 32%, whereas we got 43% on his base, and we got the Town Hall too, so we got the victory. Um, the loot bonus is pretty awesome, 25,000 of each, and uh, the trophies, of course, plus 32. So that is a good example of some Builder Hall 3 gameplay. Of course, there's much more to it. That's just a very uh, small sample. But let's take a look at some higher level gameplay up at Builder Hall 5. Okay, so I am Builder Hall 5 now. You can see I have the max troops currently in the game. This is the highest you can get. Level 10 for all seven of the troops. Let's go ahead and search. You can see I also have my battle machine ready to go. He is level 5. Um, which is max. So let's go ahead and get into this um, attack and then we hit find now. Um, let's see who we match up with. All right, searching in the clouds and what do you know? We got Bisectatron again. I can't believe it. This kid just won't stop searching at the same time and copying our base designs, exact same base as well. Very weird stuff here. Um, but let's go ahead and scout out this base. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, higher level troops that uh, so I can give you guys a glimpse of what it looks like. Let's use some of these guys, the, um, the cannon carts. Let's use some of the baby dragons. Let's use some of the bombers. And then finally, we'll use the sneaky archers. Okay, very good. Um, you guys can basically see how each troop works as I drop it. Um, I want to come and get the, uh, come from the top left, get that uh, air bomb machine taken out, and then that way I can attack the bottom right uh, with my baby dragons, and there's not a whole lot to defend that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's drop um, my, my bomber right here. You can see the option to swap goes away once the attack starts. You have a minute to uh, prepare yourself. Um, look at that bomber though, it's insane the amount of damage he does, um, especially on the first throw. It's much more limited on the second and stuff like that. But the first throw, he did a ton of damage. Let's get the cannon cart going and let's get the battle machine going right in the middle. So funnel has been created, I guess you could say. Um, funneling an important principle in this game mode as well. Let's get some sneaky archers going um, on the top right here and a few on the bottom left. Boom, King's ability, or not King's ability, Battle Machine ability. Watch him power up right there. You can see the multi-mortar doing work. And look at his ability. It's regenerating. It should be back soon. Last a little bit longer. Come on, come on, come on. Boom, pop it again. You can see um, regenerating ability. Very cool. Need you to get that taken out. Get the, uh, the air bomb spawner. Looks like he got it. Nope, but the bombers will get it. So the bombers help me out. I can send a baby dragon in directly there. I can send one in. This isn't going to go for a three star, but I can get some percentage on the outside. Um, unless that baby dragon's not going to get the builder hall. No, it's not. Going to have to send in another one, and I missed. How about that? Missed it. 
dropped it on the uh, the double cannon and as a result this one's going to go for a one star we'll have to hope bisectatron didn't do much against us back out and you can see here victory he only got 17 percent so we really crushed it um awesome stuff there uh backing out that's pretty much it for the attack and you can see it's much more strategic in a sense in terms of you have much less troops than you do in your regular village so each troop matters and as you find a base you have a minute to choose what troops you want to attack it with and you can swap out anything the uh, battle machine's a ton of fun to use i'll make more videos about how to use him one final thing before i wrap up this video the base building basically you go into the layout editor here and you have three slots for bases just like you do in your home village so you can try out different bases stuff like that which is very cool i'll make a video on base building as well so like i said not everything is going to be exactly the same this is a development build so some of the numbers and some of the uh, everything, I guess I should say, might look just a tad bit different as you guys are playing it. But I hope you like the update. I think it's going to be cool. I'll put all my thoughts in a different video as well. I don't want to overwhelm this video with information. But I think it's a cool uh, mode. And I think it has potential for the future for them to build on this and put in more infrastructure to make this even cooler game mode. Looks like my connection lost is a sign for me to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Be sure to be subscribed if you're not already for future content, and I'll see you guys soon. Bisectatron out.